LIGO, a billion-dollar gravity wave observatory made from two detectors located 3,030 kilometers apart. One is in Livingston, Louisiana, the other in the Hanford Nuclear Site in Washington State. On February 11, 2016, the announcement was made that LIGO had detected the gravity waves it had been searching for, thereby confirming a 100-year-old prediction made by Albert Einstein. Start by connecting the detector pair and then create a perpendicular to this line at each detector. From the one located in Hanford site, the alignment passes within 2.2 kilometers of the Great Pyramid and from Livingston within 50 kilometers of Stonehenge. These most famous megalithic sites are a recurring theme throughout this LIGO video series. Draw a Vesca Pisces using the two LIGO points as centers and add in the bisector. This comes within 14.6 kilometers of the Kaaba at Mecca and lines up with the bedrock of 1,500 kilometers of Red Sea coast. As a consequence, if you draw a circle centered on the Kaaba through the Livingston detector, it passes within 5 kilometers of the sister detector in Hanford, Washington. This cube marks the most sacred spot in Islam, where 1.6 billion Muslims are required to direct their attention five times a day in prayer and to physically visit in a pilgrimage at least once in their lives if possible. The biggest component of each LIGO observatory is an L-shaped ultra-high vacuum system measuring 4 kilometers on each arm. 4 kilometers is 2.16 nautical miles, which happens to be 1 ten-thousandth of the Earth's circumference, and a number you might recognize from sacred geometry. Looking at both detectors from above, we see that they are oriented by the same 61.6 .6 degree angle to the line connecting their centers. Project azimuths along the lower arms of both detectors in the opposite directions and zoom out to show that the detectors are also oriented to the Vesca Pisces. We can create two triangles with sides of 3,030 kilometers based on each detector's orientation. These triangles are off being aligned to the Vesca Pisces by less than two tenths of a degree. The base of one of them passes almost directly over the Masonic Denver International Airport. The Hanford nuclear site got its start in World War II with the Manhattan Project, the top secret U.S. government program to develop the first nuclear weapons. This resulted in Trinity, the first nuclear device to be detonated, where they coined the term Ground Zero. This site ultimately produced the plutonium for most of the more than 60,000 nuclear weapons in the U.S. arsenal. The geomancy of Hornby Island and the Comox Valley, B.C. act as a unifying theme throughout this video series, so I'm noting the connection to Hanford. Hornby Island's main two ridges express a hexagonal patterning of the island's most prominent bedrock. One of these hexagonal ridges lines up precisely with Machu Picchu, the well-known megalithic site in Peru and the alignment passes through the heart of the Hanford site on the way to Machu Picchu. It comes within 7 kilometers of the LIGO detector. Machu Picchu plays an important role later in this video series, connecting the LIGO detectors to Stonehenge and the Freemasons. Looking at the other detector in Livingston, Louisiana, we see that a line from here exactly to the Kaaba at Mecca passes over the World Trade Center complex in New York, ground zero for the 911 attacks. Specifically, this line comes within 150 meters of the center of the site between the Twin Towers. This spot was marked with a sculpture called the Sphere before the towers fell during the most important event in modern times. You may not know, but World Trade Center architect Minoru Yamasaki actually designed the plaza between the towers to mimic the Grand Mosque at Mecca, complete with a two-story Kaaba analog. It's hard to imagine a more important alignment with regards to our civilization's zeitgeist. The most important narrative as of 2016 is clearly the story about this seemingly endless war currently underway in the Middle East between the West and Islam. Considering that 9-11 is by far the most important factor of this war, and the cube sphere symbology is particularly charged. The sphere sculpture miraculously survived the collapse of Tower 1 and Tower 2, and now rests in Battery Park. This placement creates another exact alignment with the Kaaba, this time between the flagpole of Liberty Island, the Sphere, and the Kaaba Cube at Mecca. From above, you can see that there is duality playing out with the flagpole sitting in the center of a series of concentric circles and the Statue of Liberty in concentric squares. 
Given that the flagpole is in exact alignment with the most important cube in the world and its spherical analog suggests that we look at how Lady Liberty's squares might relate to Old Glory's circles. Map the outermost ring and move it to be centered on the Statue of Liberty. If you now draw a square with perimeter equal to the circumference of the circle, you see that it matches the platform's architecture. This squaring of the circle is encoded in both the Great Pyramid and in Stonehenge. In the Great Pyramid's case, this relationship holds if we set the size of the square to be equal to the pyramid's base and the circle to have radius equal to the pyramid's height. At Stonehenge, it holds by sizing the circle based on the outer edge of the sarsen stones and the square by the inner blue stones. This can be seen clearly on this full-scale replica of Stonehenge at Mary Hill, Washington. This relationship also applies to the relative sizes of the Earth and the Moon. The Statue of Liberty stands on a platform shaped as an 11-pointed star, and she has seven rays in her crown. The ratio of the side length of the Great Pyramid to its height is 11 to 7, and as a consequence of the squaring of the circle relationship, 11 over 7 is equal to pi over 2. In other words, the dimensions of the Great Pyramid encode pi. Given all this, it makes sense when you learn that the statue's pedestal is built up from a cornerstone laid by Freemasons as their compass and square symbol encodes the squaring of the circle in plain sight. Returning for a bit to the Mary Hill Stonehenge, we see that it is also on the Columbia River, about 230 kilometers downstream from Hanford. Taking a line from Mary Hill shows how the west arm of the Hanford detector is almost a line, suggesting we take a closer look at the relationship. Create a square based on the detector arms. Now move the square so that its top edge lines up with the detector arms. Move the line from Mary Hill Stonehenge and we see how it is almost exactly parallel to the west arm. A deeper look at the geomancy of LIGO and Mary Hill Stonehenge connects these sites to two important Hanford nuclear facilities and ultimately to the Great Pyramid by the geometry encoded in the nuclear sites. I made a short video about this interesting aside and I'm offering it exclusively to those who sign up with a newsletter at hornbyislandmystery.com. There's a link in the description. All this symbology led me to look at a line from Stonehenge to the most important George Washington National Masonic Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia. This alignment is important in its own right and it is even more so because it forms the foundation of the rest of the video series. It's a bit of an aside but relevant because it's so foundational. I cover this in detail in the next video of the series, LIGO Decoded 2, Stonehenge the Masons in 33, but I include a short preview here that emphasizes the alignment's importance. The George Washington National Masonic Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia serves to memorialize both George Washington and every American who ever was or will be a Mason. It is also exactly 333 feet tall. At the other end of the line, Stonehenge is 33 meters across, echoing the memorial's height in a sense. And finally, it passes exactly 333 meters of the Statue of Liberty, which is 333 kilometers from the Masonic Memorial.